uh, the presentation time is 30 minutes and please welcome Gajend with applause. Uh, thank you everyone. I thank organizers for having me here. So today I'll be speaking about uh, security best practices for Django applications. So yesterday my friend Tushar has spoken about some aspects of security. Uh, it, it, it's a uh, different approach, but uh, we are following a different approach. Yeah. So in today's talk, I'll speak about the importance of security with respect to web applications, then identifying security uh, issues using Mozilla Observatory, then OWASP top 10 issues and how to address them in Django, then built-in security features, and secure deployment of Django applications. Actually, it's a bit long presentation. Uh, I may not be able to cover all the aspects, but of course, the PPT will be available for you for future reference. So importance of uh, web application security, there are two reasons, uh, two main reasons we can consider. First one is leakage of uh, sensitive data. So hackers can leak the uh, sensitive data to the public and uh, it may affect the uh, reputation of your business. It may also result into financial loss and so many other uh, problems. Okay. So there is a tool called as uh, DJ Checkup. So you can use this uh, tool to identify the vulnerabilities. So uh, the URL was mentioned in the slide. I think there is some problem with the scalability of the slides. Yeah, but you will get the URL at the bottom. Okay. So you just need to mention the uh, URL here. And once you click on Run Checkup on my site, it will show the output like this. And you can see here that it is going to show the output uh, in two ways. One is thumbs up and thumbs down. Thumbs up means that particular aspect has been taken care. Say, for example, debug is not enabled. Then HTTP redirecting to HTTP is enabled. Then HTTPS is enabled, and so on. But if you see that there is any aspect which is shown as thumbs down, then that means there is a vulnerability, and you need to take care of it. Now, on this slide, you are seeing a file called as settings.py. And in settings.py, there are two things. One is the secret key, and second one is debug parameter. So you can set debug parameter to true only if you are developing the application. But if you are deploying the application, and if it is in production environment, then it has to be set to false. Otherwise, what will happen is hackers will use some payload, some attack payload, and they may generate some error messages. And those error messages can be used to carry out further attacks. Then secret key, you need to keep it secret. So these are the two settings which you need to make in settings.py. Then there is a very useful tool called as Mozilla Observatory. It is developed by Mozilla. And it is available for everyone to use for free of cost. It's a tool to analyze your website and inform you if, there are, if you are utilizing many available methods to secure it. So it's created by April King at Mozilla. It's split into three projects. First one is it has HTTP Observatory, which is a scanner or a grader. And second one is Observatory CLI, that is command line interface. And third one is Observatory website, which you are going to use. Now you can access the scanner using the URL mentioned here, that is observatory.mozilla.org. And you can also have a link of uh, Mozilla HTTP Observatory uh, GitHub repository. That is, if you don't want to use the online tool, then you can set it up locally on your system. OK, actually, it's not showing the screenshot here. Uh, that's fine. But if you click on the link, uh, it will show the result of uh, Mozilla website itself. Okay. Now, what Mozilla Observatory does is it grades your website from A plus to F. F means there are many vulnerabilities and you need to take care of it. So goal should be from converting the result F to A plus. As you move higher, that means you, your website has got better security. So once you ensure that your website has got A plus grade, that means 
your website is secure. Now let us see the OWASP top 10 uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, OWASP stands for Open Web Application uh, Security Project. It basically identifies top 10 issues. Okay, so they are top 10 issues, and whenever they release the top 10, the sequence keeps on changing. Now you can see here there's a comparison of uh, top 10 issues in 2017 and top 10 issues in 2021. Now these are not only with respect to Django. It applies to all the web applications. So Django is a web framework, so they automatically apply to Django also. Okay. Now you can see here in 2017, injection attack was at number one. But in uh, 2021, it's at number three. So similarly, broken authentication was at number two, but now it has been included in a7 category. That is, it's at number 7. Now, what has happened in 2021 is they have merged few vulnerabilities into some categories and they have also introduced new vulnerabilities. Okay. So, on the right hand side, you can see which are the new vulnerabilities. So, new vulnerabilities are insecure design, then software and data integrity failures, and last one is server side request forgery. So there are three new categories, four categories with naming and scoping changes, and some consolidation in top 10 for 2021. Now we are going to discuss top 10 issues with respect to 2021. Now in 2021, the first, uh, uh, first vulnerability, or the most of the time the vulnerability carried out was broken access control. So in broken access control, the application uses unverified data in SQL call, and that is accessing the account information. So you can see here, there is a query, right? Set string, and we are accepting the parameter as account number. Now what attacker can do is, he can use the attack payload and try to change the account number. If he is able to access the page, that is user page or user dashboard, then it's a flaw. Then uh, how to prevent uh, broken access control? Broken access control, the first uh, rule you need to follow is deny by default, except public resources. So when you develop a web application, you will be displaying some part for public which do not require any login in credentials. So in that case, you can just make those up is public. So you need to follow deny by default. Then access control is only effective if enforced in trusted uh, server-side code serverless APIs where attacker cannot modify the access control check or metadata with exception of the public resources. Then disable web server uh, directory listing. Then log control access uh, failures, then if you are using Django application, if you are building Django application, then you have to go for Django user management. So basically you are assigning the roles here and resources, so which resources accessed by whom. So second uh, category is cryptographic uh, failures. So here uh, rather than attacking the crypto, attackers uh, steal keys and execute man in the middle attack. Now, generally how it is carried is, uh, we know that whenever we are sending the information over the internet, it is first encrypted and then sent, and on the receiver side, it will be decrypted. Correct? Now, what if uh, the uh, destination system is compromised? So, as the moment you decrypt the information, it can be stolen. So in this case, there are some advancements in uh, cryptography. So they are, you can perform computation over the encrypted data. So there is no need to uh, decrypt the information. But of course, it's a, uh, the field is in its nascent stage. So still there are lots of developments need to happen in 
homomorphic encryption. But yeah, there are some systems like partially homomorphic encryption systems and fully homomorphic encryption systems like uh, Gentry's crypto system, which uh, allows arbitrary computations over uh, encrypted data. Now there is one more reason. So here a site doesn't use or enforce TLS for all pages. Then a password database uses unsalted or simple hashes to show, store the everyone's passwords. Now the prevention is that classify the data processed, stored, or transmitted by an application and identify which data is sensitive according to privacy laws and regulatory requirements or business needs. Apply controls as per classification. Now there's a catch here. The catch here that uh, law or government may not recognize the most advanced algorithm yet. It may be in its uh, research stage. It may be giving the positive results, but still it is not yet recognized by the law. So that may be a problem here. So you need to see which cryptographic algorithms are recognized, which hashing algorithms are recognized by your government, and you can use that. If you don't use it, then maybe there will be a problem in uh, claiming the compensation. Then make sure to encrypt all sensitive data at rest. Then ensure up-to-date and strong standard algorithms and protocols. Then encrypt all data in transit with uh, secure protocols such as TLS. Then store passwords using uh, strong adaptive and sorted hashing algorithms. Then verify independently the effectiveness and effectiveness of the configuration and settings. You may be having the best software, but if it is not config if it is not configured properly, then it becomes vulnerable. Now some settings related to SSL or TLS for Django are this. So in production.py, you need to set these options to true. For example, course replace HTTPS, refer to true, then host scheme should be HTTPS and so on. Now, to prevent it, you can wrap the Django fields and encryption provided by the Python cryptography library. So you need to make use of cryptographic library hashing algorithms. And if you are interested, then you can also uh, implement uh, homomorphic encryption techniques. You don't need to uh, use any specific library for that. It's not required because you are just exploring the properties of encryption algorithms. So third one is the injection. Uh, uh, so in injection vulnerability, the most uh, common one is the SQL injection. But it's not just the SQL injection. We also have got other categories, such as LDAP, XPath, and NoSQL queries. Even OS commands can be. Uh, injected with uh, malicious payload. Now on this slide, uh, you can see here that there is a there are two lines. So first one is uh, string query is equal to select star from accounts, where customer ID is equal to ID. So it's a valid uh, query. But if you look at the second line, so here the URL is uh, mentioned, but at the end, the ID is replaced with the malicious payload. Why it becomes malicious payload is, you can see here that there's a Boolean operator OR is used. And we all know how OR works. So whatever may be the, our left-hand side query, it's always going to result into true. And it may uh, show the sensitive data from the database. So that's why you should uh, always validate the data. Now, if you are using Django, then extra and raw SQL, you need to use it with caution, because they are used to write custom queries in Django. Again, sorry for the, uh, it is not displaying the image. Now, but I can tell what is there in this slide. So there's a user form, and user form is accepting two information. One is username and the password. Now, what are the valid usernames and password? Our email ID, mobile number, and so on. But instead of entering user, name and password, I'm going to enter username as or one equal to one. Password also as or one equal to one. So this makes the query vulnerable. It's, it's going to become uh, malicious uh, input. 
Then similarly for uh, command injection, uh, we know that how we execute commands in uh, CLI, that is command line interface. We may just write ls, we may just write uh, 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 dig command and so on. So after the command, I'm going to use the ampersand operator and attach a malicious command on the server side. So if I say dig and uh, IP address and ampersand and say ls, so it may display the uh, files and folders on the server side. So that's the problem with uh, command injection. Now, how are we going to prevent uh, command injection is, we have to use query parameterization, and luckily it is done by default in Django. Then whenever you are using extra and uh, raw SQL, use it with caution, because uh, you are writing custom queries there. Then use positive or whitelisting server-side input validation. It may not be the complete defense, but yeah, you are at least taking care of known uh, vulnerabilities. Then escape all user-supplied input. Then do not call operating system commands directly through user interfaces. Then you can use limit and other SQL controls with queries to prevent uh, mass disclosure of records in case of SQL injection. Then you can say just say limit 2000, then maybe it may just display 1000 records. So again, cross-site scripting, I had an image here, so yeah, it's fine, okay. So how cross-site cross scripting works? Uh, again, I can give you an example. Let's assume that there's a web page, and then in, and in that web page, there is a search uh, option. Now what I'm going to do is, in that search option, I'm going to just write a simple uh, JavaScript code. Say alert, hello. And once I click on search button, if it displays, okay, if it displays alert box, then we need to uh, assume that the website is vulnerable for cross-site scripting attacks. If it doesn't display the alert box there on the website, then uh, you can assume that the cross-site scripting vulnerability has been taken care of. But again, it's not 100% uh, sure. Okay. So how it is prevented is you can use uh, Django templates, which protects you against the majority of uh, XSS attacks, but there are exceptions. Then Django templates escape specific characters, which are particularly dangerous to HTML. While this protects users from most malicious input, it is not entirely foolproof. For example, consider the uh, code statement there. This is the valid input, this is a valid statement, but it may also become vulnerable. So it's also important to be particularly careful when you're using is safe with custom template tags. And you should also very, very careful when storing HTML in the database, especially when that HTML is retrieved and displayed. So in this case, you may have to deal with the different content types, that is MIME content types, and decide how to display the code, whether you want to display it as a text or you want to render it on the web page when you retrieve the HTML code from the database. This is a new category that is insecure design. So. What happens uh, here is, so consider a website that allows a group booking of discounts and maximum 15 tickets you can book. But what if attacker can modify it and book 500 tickets at a time? Okay, so if the validation is not done properly here, then it will result into financial loss. So insecure design is a very broad category representing different weaknesses expressed as missing or ineffective control design. Now, one of the important factors that contribute to insecure design is the lack of uh, business risk profiling inherent in the software system being developed and the failure to determine what level of security design is required. So business analysts or uh, managers who are meeting uh, clients, so they should have a sense of security or they should have understanding of how secure systems are being developed so that they can 
assess the risk of business with respect to security. Now, a secure design can have implementation defects, and insecure design cannot be fixed by perfect implementation. This is a very, very important statement. So prevention is consider leveraging OWASP software assurance maturity model to help structure your secure software development efforts. So you need to follow secure development uh, life cycle. All of us are aware of SDLC, that is software development life cycle. But we need to also add security aspect here. Say, for example, we are designing a software, but we are not considering, not considering or we are not including security aspects in the design phase itself. Then establish and use a library of uh, secure design patterns. Then use threat modeling for critical authentication, access control, business logic, and key flows. Then write unit and integration tests to validate that all critical flows are resistant to the threat model. Compile use cases and misuse cases for each tier of your application. Then limit resource consumption by user or a service. Then next category is security misconfiguration. So it's also uh, very, very important as I have already made a statement that your software may be secure, but if it is not con configured properly, then it's a problem. Say for example, uh, WordPress. So WordPress is used to design web applications, right? But if it is not hardened properly, if it is not configured for security properly, then it becomes vulnerable. So attacks will often attempt to exploit unpatched uh, flaws or access default accounts, unused pages, unprotected files and directories, and so on. So it can happen at uh, any level of uh, application stack. So including network services, platform, web server, etc. So the application server comes with uh, sample applications that are not removed from the production server. Okay, you may also create a hello application and you may also include it and ship it, but that will create a problem. Then directory listing is not disabled on the server. Then the application server's configuration allows detailed error messages. Then a cloud service provider has default uh, sharing permission open to the internet by other CSP users. Now prevention is go for Django hardening. That is, don't go for uh, default settings. Okay, you need to customize it. Then disable directory listing. Then use uh, automated scanners. So I have already given examples of automated scanners. Mozilla Observatory is one example, but there are uh, many others. There are paid ones also. Then customize uh, error messages to hide sensitive information because error messages display system information sometimes, and that can be used to carry out further attacks. Then an automated process to verify the effectiveness of the configurations and settings in all environments, so you can do it periodically. Then review cloud storage permissions. So these are the few uh, methods by which you can prevent it. The next is uh, XML external entities. Again, this is the part of uh, uh, the same category that is security misconfiguration. So here we know that XML allows us to create uh, our own tags, our own entities. But now what I can do is I can create a, uh, create an entity. So here the entity is XXC. And whenever we use uh, HTML custom entity, that is when I say ampersand XXC and semicolon, it may directly access the file slash it is a slash password file, or it may also carry out denial of service attack by potentially linking it to uh, endless file. So prevention is whenever possible, use less complex data formats such as JSON. So don't go for uh, XML. Then disable uh, XML external entity and DD processing in all XML parsers. Then you again implement a positive server side input validation. Then verify that XML or XSL file upload functionality 
validates incoming uh, XML or XSD validation or similar one. Then you can also use uh, uh, shadow daemon tool, which is actually uh, used to detect record and block attacks on web applications. It's a free software. It supports Python, Django, and Flask, also other languages. The next is uh, vulnerable and outdated components. So even including vulnerable and outdated components will create a problem because hackers will easily come to know by accessing the log of uh, that particular component what the vulnerability is. So the solution is to keep everything updated. Your plugins, themes, packages, everything, your system, everything updated. The next is uh, identification and uh, authentication failures. So instead of uh, accessing or trying to break millions of uh, accounts, hackers will try to just gain access to the admin account. Once they get access to the admin account, they can access anything. So prevention is uh, implement multi-factor authentication uh, system. Then you can also go for one-time login. Then you can also go for uh, check for 10,000 worst password checking and so on. So you can use these packages. That is one time uh, password for Django, then two-factor authentication for Django. Then Django uses use session management and CAPTCHA. Then you can also limit the number of uh, login attempts. Then you can block multiple requests from same IP. Then next is software and uh, data integrity failures. Again, it's a new category in 2021. So it focuses on making assumption related to the software updates critical data and CI-CD pipeline without verifying the integrity. So here the solution is use digital signatures to ensure that integrity is not compromised. Then ensure that software supply chain security tools such as OWASP dependency check or OWASP Cyclone DX is used. Then ensure that your CI-CD pipeline has proper segregation, configuration, and access control to ensure the integrity of the code flowing through the building and uh, deploying processes. So insecure deserialization is part of uh, the same category here. So the next category is security and logging and monitoring failures. Now, this is very, very important. So exploitation of insufficient logging and monitoring is bedrock of nearly uh, every major incident. So one strategy for determining if you have sufficient monitoring is to examine the logs following the penetration testing. So the solution is ensure that you have proper logging and monitoring system, so which helps you to identify the problems. Then the last one is uh, server-side request forgery. So again, this is the uh, new category, whenever web application is fetching a remote resource without validating the user supplied URL. So it allows attacker to coerce the application and send crafted request and unexpected destinations even uh, uh, when protected by a firewall. So the prevention is, there are two ways, one is at the network layer and second one is at the application layer. On application layer, you need to sanitize and validate all client-supplied input data. Do not send raw response to clients. Then disable HTTP redirections and so on. Now beyond OWASP top 10, you have also got uh, code quality issues, then denial of service, then memory management errors, which you need to take care. Then these are the security features in uh, Django. So Django provides protection for these attacks. Then additional security guidelines are mentioned on this slide. I am running uh, short of time. So you can also use Django Hunter. So it's a tool designed to help identify incorrectly configured Django applications that are exposing sensitive, sensitive information. Then you can use this uh, PyGoat application, which is designed, uh, which is an intentionally vulnerable application, which is also hosted online, or you can also install it on your system. It basically teaches how you can identify the vulnerabilities in Django and how you can prevent it. Then there are some uh, 
security resources mentioned here. So you can just uh, go through these URLs and most of the content, whatever you see here, you can find it on these uh, links. So finally, since Django is a web framework, it maps to all top 10 vulnerabilities. It has built-in modules to build secure Django applications. Then security of the application and data is not only the responsibility of developers, the user is also equally responsible for the security of data and concerns. Thank you everyone for patient listening. Uh, so thank you for your presentation. I see there are some questions on Slido. Uh, uh, where can we see uh, the kind of categorization of security vulnerabilities on the web apps? Yeah, so you can uh, go to, you can just Google OWASP top 10 or in one of the slides I have mentioned already the link. So you can just visit that link and you will find the categories. Okay. It's actually more detailed information there. Are there any services to comprehensively detect the, these vulnerabilities? Yeah, so if you are going for open source, uh, then Mozilla Observatory is one, Django, DJ Checkup is one, but these are, the, these are the free resources. Mozilla Observatory is a very, uh, you can say, it's a very good tool, but if you are interested in commercial tools, there are commercial tools available. Okay. Could you just show the URL of published slide again? This one? Yeah. So, I guess no question as of now. Yeah. Thank you very much for your talk. And everybody, please give a huge round of applause for the speaker. If you have any questions and would like to talk to the speaker directly, please go to the hallway open space. The speakers will be around. So we ask your cooperation in not gathering around the stage. Sponsors will have their own booths, which we encourage you to visit. All participants who have purchased ticket can also participate in the sticker rally at the sponsor booth. If you have collected the specified number of stickers, you can exchange them. Thank you so much for your presentation. Okay. Thank you.